Hello, I am Luxbrush. And Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 4, Episode 15, Twilight Time. I'm going to let you go first on your thoughts. Oh, why? Just because for the first three seasons I was a huge Twilight fan? <laughs> no, no, I, I just want to hear some of your thoughts before I give mine. Ah, uh, okay. A... The first thing that caught my attention was the diagram in the background. At first glance, I actually thought that's what Twilight was referring to when going over the instructions with Sweetie Belle. I was like, wait a minute, that looks like the box. Awesome! We're actually referencing the overall arching plot of the season. Find the keys for the box. I actually didn't catch that until my third watch. Actually, no, my second watch. Oh, sorry. I saw that in like the first three seconds. Which is funny, because I normally don't notice background stuff. And hooray for the younger ponies finally acting like, Oh my god, Twilight's a princess! She's an alicorn! Oh my god! <laughs> uh, yeah, I also found it nice that Twilight is actually teaching Scootaloo, Apple Bloom, and Sweetie Belle things other than what they've been doing. Also, it's nice that they're showing them growing up a little bit by the fact that Sweetie Belle's finally learning more about her magic. What each crusader was working on actually tied in pretty well with their skill sets. Because in the Cutie Pox episode, you know, at the end of that episode, the other crusaders were going, Hey, you know, that potion was pretty cool. Maybe you should be, you know, Cutie Mark potion maker. And Scootaloo always has her scooter, so Unicycle is generically in the same family as being a wheeled vehicle powered by the person riding it. I really like all the fun stuff and not overly silly stuff they did with Spike in the background in this episode. Ah, uh, the picking up the broom, showing off that, oh yeah, it's not that heavy. <laughs> and Spike made nachos. Yeah, and some other stuff throughout the episode like that. It's just every time he had a nice expression, I was laughing at him in a good way. Not like, oh, they're treating Spike like an idiot again. <laughs> but nope, nope, he was in the background. They were having fun with him without making it over silly or Spike is just being humdrum again. You just made a whole episode about him not being humdrum. Why are you making him humdrum? <laughs> because not all characters are allowed to be three-dimensional at the same time. Notice that we only had two of the main six actually really in this episode. And Pinkie Pie's was just a cameo. Yeah, and it was a good cameo. It wasn't overly silly. It was, oh, look, something interesting. Oh, no one's noticing it. Oh, there it is again. Oh, okay, whatever. Moving on. Bye, Twilight! Also, she has two jobs now? I know, I was like really trying, I'm like, okay, does she have that tray around her neck because that's a serving tray and she's going to sit down with her own milkshake, or is she really working there? Because it could go either way. Mm hmm And we're jumping all over the timeline of the episode, but that's okay. <laughs> Mainly because I want to jump back to the fact that it's nice that Pip squeaks back. Yeah, which... Brings us to more timeline jumping, because my thing with Pip Squeak was going to be, why didn't Twilight recognize him? She knew him in costume on Nightmare Night. Oh, you mean at the very end where she goes, let's go over here to this little filly. I think that was more of professionalism than it was of her not recognizing him. You know, not saying his name so she doesn't give the impression to the other students that these are, that the rest of them are any less important other than the fact that Sweetie Belle and them are there in the first place, though she says that they're swear they're sharing their time. Yeah, but at the same time, why pick Pip Squeak and then not use his name? And now jumping back again to the beginning. Yes. I, I noticed Apple Bloom and Sweetie Belle's voices are a little bit different. I know the voice actresses are growing up, so it kind of shows in their voices. Though Scooter's voice actress doesn't seem to have changed much. And why? Is Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon being semi-nice in this episode? I know they're being mean in other ways, but it seems like they're being a little too nice for the way they usually act. You are not a girl. So, you're at a little bit of a disadvantage here. They started out being mean with the whole Manhattan thing. Then, you know, Twilight is actually a princess, so that does have some draw to it. Then when they actually go and see that Twilight is still her regular self, change of plans. 
will now assist you in getting everyone else to see Twilight. And by putting all of this strain on your association with Twilight, you will now lose face and lose your status and I, Diamond Tiara, will now go back to being the center of attention after further having humiliated you, but this time it doesn't look like my fault. I love how Twilight's only a princess when it's convenient for the plot. True, because like we said and talked about in Rarity Takes Manhattan, flash those wings, get a cab. But, you know, in Ponyville, you would think that she would be the least revered because she's lived in Ponyville for a long time and everyone there knows her to some degree. Also, we're talking about young, impressionable fillies who, even though the games they play out in the playground are more what I did in elementary as opposed to what I played in junior high, they're right at that tween stage, you know, where they have celebrity fandom and worship and all of that stuff going on. So for the younger ponies to go crazy kind of makes sense, but at the same time, really, no one's seen her walking around Ponyville? We've shown her walking around Ponyville. I'm sure it doesn't only happen while the fillies and foals are in school. I mean, even Time and Tiara comments on the fact that she saw her around town, but eh, I thought it was like that until, oh, she's a princess now. Hey, I ha might have an in here. And Time and Tiara and Silver Spoon were doing a lot of, oh, how do I phrase this politely? Butt kissing? <laughs> yes, because they were trying to ingratiate themselves. Because plan number one was to supplant the Cutie Mark Crusaders by becoming. Twilight's entourage instead of the Cutie Mark Crusaders. Then when that didn't work, move on to plan B. Oh, and the butler reminded me a bit of Hayate with all that fancy gym... All that fancy gymnast... Can't say the word gymnastics. <laughs> <laughs> all that fancy gymnastics. I didn't really think so much of Hayate. More because the butler was older. I was thinking of uh, Maximilian's butler in Tiny Toons, the one who's old enough that he should have been retired but still does absolutely everything. Mm. And now moving on to the restaurant scene more, I noticed that the cup's perspective was off. They were very flat compared to everything else on the table, so I almost think that the cups may have been an afterthought on the table. Okay, that I didn't catch. What I was thinking when they had that scene going on was how messy Twilight's face was and how inelegantly she was eating and how the young ponies had cameras and we were going to get back to a gossip column episode. Yeah, I don't remember Twilight ever being that messy either. And I thought they may go that direction, but this episode for me was kind of all over the place with the message it was trying to send because I was going, okay, we're going for this. No, we're going for this. No, we're going for this. Okay, I don't know where we're going. Basically, by the end, it was like, I have no idea how they're going to resolve this. I was just wondering mainly how far is it going to go before they get caught. That was my main thing. Yeah, I was mostly thinking it was going to happen somewhere in the middle of the episode. There must have been the rest of the episode resolving what happened. But I was like, we're almost done, and we still haven't resolved anything, and we've added more stuff. What are we going to... Oh, so that's the lesson we were going for. Wasn't expecting that. I thought it was going to be like, oh, you were caught in a lie. Okay, I'm sorry for being caught in a lie. Not, I was acting special because my friend's special. No, what made her special was my friend. <laughs> okay, I'll work with that. Well, it could have had some better phrasing, because I took it more as, your friends are special because they're your friends, not because of what they can do for you. You don't choose your friends based on making some sort of trade advantage. You choose your friends because they're your friends. Because you have interests in common and enjoy spending time together, not because, oh, hey, if I get a friend who's a photographer, a friend whose hobby is sewing, and a friend whose hobby is cooking, I can get free photo shoots, clothing, and free food. And I forgot to mention that when Tyliet was talking at the restaurant, when she said she was, oh, I didn't realize how hungry I was. She kind of reminded me of Bubbles. Same voice actress, by the way. <laughs> and what the heck was up with Scootaloo and when the picture started being taken and she started posing and stuff like that? 
the explanation that Scootaloo gave afterwards was not really sufficient for me. Okay, if you don't smile in a picture, you look sad. Okay, then smile. Don't go all cover girl. <laughs> when you said cover girl, my brain actually jumped to material girl. It was interesting how Twilight said that, oh, I need to get back and see them. And then once they showed up, she just kind of took off. I think it was just the writers, we need to get rid of Twilight at this moment. Okay, this will work. It doesn't really make sense to excuse yourself from a group of people to go back to your friends, only to say goodbye to your friends. If she was ready to leave, then she needed to say, you know, I need to say goodbye to my friends and then get going, not I need to get back with my friends. I like how all the foals had different mane styles. There were a couple of slight recolors and adjustments, but most of them had unique hairstyles. No, it was nice to see a lot of variety in the students. And it was nice to see that they weren't just focusing on the ones from the Cutie Mark Crusaders class. You know, we had students from other grade levels as well. And as I said before, I really do love Spike. Especially that scene where he brings out all the nachos and he puts it down and he goes, Ah, there you! Where are they? Shoot! <laughs> he just has this great expression on his face like, I did all that work for nothing! <laughs> I know, but at the same time, Spike's a baby dragon. I'm sure he could probably have eaten half of that himself, even though it isn't jewel-encrusted. We have established that he can eat things other than jewels. Mm hmm It's kind of a bummer. It made me kind of... You go. I think we were going the same place. It was so sad to see it all in the trash can. Yeah, it was. I liked how they were at the exclusive pool party, and the ponies were practically tearing down the gate. I mean, do you notice that one was drooling? Yeah, everyone seems to equate it with zombies! I'm like, yeah, that could work. Twilight time! Twilight time! She does have the largest brain in the village. That would work, but I was thinking more of crazy fangirls, but that's probably just because we recently had the Beatles' 50th anniversary of their Ed Sullivan performance. Ah, uh. And you are a large Beatles fan. Yes. Or a huge Beatles fan, however you want to phrase that. So even though that could have been taken more zombie-like, I took it more fangirl-like because of the way Twilight was being viewed by these ponies as a celebrity. And staying on the topic of celebrity and everyone going, Oh my god, Princess Twilight Sparkle. Let's cut back to Nightmare Night. Okay, I know Luna wasn't at her most popular when she first showed up in Ponyville. But, you know, Pipsqueak did pull on her mane there, so obviously Celebrity wasn't that intimidating or that exciting because it, other than going, you're my favorite princess. But, you know, Twilight Celebrity made for a good foil for the theme of this episode. And apparently, Pisqueak has a different voice actress now. Mm. Sounds the same, though. Very good voice actress. Or actor. At duplicating the previous actor's work. And speaking of voice actors, it was actually the voice actress for Pinkie Pie who did the coughing plant. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, they actually gave her credit for it in the credits. I liked how Diamond Tiara didn't really get the upper hand at the end. Not the total end of the episode, but when... The apple exploded. Ah, yeah. People kind of seem to think that she got a slight point of view from how the Guillermo Crusaders view her. But knowing Diane Tiara, that didn't sink in. No. No, I don't think it did at all because she knows that she wasn't there to learn. She was there to take the Guillermo Crusaders down. And that was her comment, to take them down. And then Twilight proved that well, none of you are any better. At which point, every pony leaves. I love how the Kingdom Heart Crusaders, instead of saying sorry multiple times, they said sorry once, and they said thank you for everything you've done for us. That was nice, because they truly did appreciate what she did, and they really were sorry. And since it was what they figured were going to be their final comments to her, thank you seemed more appropriate. Even more so since they actually managed to accomplish 
the three things they were trying to do. Because Scootaloo handed over Pipsqueak's scooter to Twilight, which doesn't quite seem right because it's Pipsqueak's scooter. It should go outside with Pipsqueak. Additionally, Pipsqueak is a little small for that scooter. And we didn't see Pipsqueak on a scooter that I recall. I seem to remember the only two scooters be belonging to the two ponies who blocked the Cutie Mark Crusaders from getting to the door and knocked first. I think they just wanted to give Pipsqueak a couple more lines in the episode. Probably, and it also gave Scootaloo a nice comeback since Pipsqueak was the one who blew it for them, even though it's their fault for behaving in a dishonorable fashion. Mm. They got caught because of Pipsqueak, so it gives Scootaloo a chance to say that line of, hey, this is your fault, roll with it. <laughs> And I do like how they succeeded once no one was watching. It's like when they weren't paying attention or really thinking about what they were doing is when they succeeded. They basically were overthinking things before, and now that they had a chance not to think about it as they were doing it, they were able to accomplish their task. Yeah, they weren't overthinking it and getting tensed up, so instead they were more relaxed even though they were pretty miserable. At the same time, it shows Twilight that they really were paying attention and trying to learn because they just presented her with th their three accomplishments. Which is why she forgave them in the end. Yeah, because that was how she asked them to prove that they had really come there to learn. I want to know who had to clean up the mess and whether or not anybody had applesauce. <laughs> Oh yeah, there was Apple everywhere and not just inside the library. And speaking of the library, does anyone realize that the town has a library? I don't think that the town does. Because otherwise, how could Twilight have moved into it, even temporarily as it was supposed to be at the beginning of Season 1? Mm -hmm. there, there should have been a head librarian there in the first place. And it really makes me a little concerned for Ponyville's educational system that not only was there no librarian, the library doesn't seem to be in use, and nobody seems to have trouble with Twilight staying there and it now being a home because people very rarely need to look up anything. Though Chili did come by once in the talent show episode, in the episode I remember somewhere, she, she specifically came by to get some books. Yeah, so if the library is still serving that community function, it's not relevant enough to the story arc for the authors and animators to show it. In addition, I find it kind of interesting that Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon apparently have never seen books as books. Apparently they now see them as decorations for their room. They should try it sometime, as Silver Spoon said. You're talking about two characters that are basically displayed as stuck-up popular valley girls. Of course books are a decoration. Why would you read anything when you're so busy being popular? As Rainbow Dash pointed out before <laughs> she finally read the Daring Do series, reading is totally not cool. <laughs> and then she found out she was wrong. Because <laughs> some of the best things are in books. And Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon are not going to see that anytime soon. I think just that um, we get to see more clearly, not that it hasn't been shown before, but between Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon, that Diamond Tiara is definitely the leader and that Silver Spoon is a sycophant. Yep, she's definitely the minion. Or gopher. It would be interesting to see if they ever do an episode where Silver Spoon comes to the realization that she is the minion and not the leader and tries to change things up. Mm. Or she somehow comes up with a plan that's so brilliant and works in such a way that it backfires in a good way. And she's like, why am I now friends with the cutie Mark Crusaders? Oh, damn it, you're going to hate me. <laughs> Well, she could do a plan that would backfire and end up doing something nice so the Cutie Mark Crusaders say something nice. But she could very easily undo all of that just by saying blank flank and stomping off. Who'd be friends with the blank flank stomp off? Girl friendships are fierce things. <laughs> I'm lucky. I never experienced one like that, apparently. Or one, actually one at all, because, you know, I'm a guy. <laughs> no, no. 
playgrounds, promising to be someone's best friend was serious business. Mm. You know, and you had cliques even in elementary school. The more you know. <laughs> the more you're glad you went to a tiny school. Something like that. I'm, I'm just glad I didn't experience any of that stuff, though. I experienced all that stuff. I also know what bullying is like, so. Um, which was addressed in another episode before we ever started this recording business. Yep. So if things work out, we may end up going back over those episodes during the breaks or hiatuses between seasons. I will be impressed if you keep up drawing that long. Ha <laughs> ha. I love your confidence in me. I really do. <laughs> what are your overall thoughts on this episode? Overall, I did enjoy it because we finally had Twilight having some celebrity status. We had something that was Cutie Mark Crusader focused without it actually being all about let's try 50 million different things and get our Cutie Marks that, you know, really gave them some room for growth. What I didn't care for so much is how much it breaks with the rest of the season. Because we've been saying all season, why isn't anyone going, oh my god, an alicorn? So it seems out of place that it's happening now. It seems kind of late in the game. Well, for me, when I first watched the episode, I was confused at where they were going with the lesson. To me, it started out as like, oh, we're going to start out with don't let fame get to your head. Then it switched over to, no, the liar is being caught. Then it was on to something else and... By the end, it was like, I am very confused at where we're going with this lesson. And then at the end, they gave the lesson. I was like, oh, okay, I can see how this episode would fit within that. And I still sat there confused. And then I watched it a second time and went, I'm feeling better about this episode, but still feel confused about it. It took about the third time before I was like, oh, I'm enjoying this episode now. I, I get what they were trying to do. And I was laughing a lot at Spike because his facial expressions were just priceless. This has been our thoughts on My Little Pony. Friendship is Magic, Season 4, Episode 15, Twilight Time. Thank you for listening, and hope to speak with you again soon. Oh, and as a P.S., what's Twilight Time in reference to? Because all I was coming up with was Burger Time. Yeah, I had no reference for that either. And the articles I looked up about Twilight Time didn't seem to point out any reference to the name. They usually point that out. Oh, well, we'll know eventually. Yep.